So one of the main pillars of why Zoom became so popular was really simplicity, right? As a user, you could just easily click on a link and you were joined to a meeting. But that simplicity goes to two other levels. One, buying Zoom. Buying Zoom is super easy. You just go to the website and buy Zoom. But the really big part of Zoom simplicity is administration and operation. For example, creating users or assigning licenses or even configuring phone for users. So we're going to go through three things that a Zoom admin and maybe a small environment would do. A big environment like an enterprise would not do this. They'd probably have it scripted. But how does a Zoom admin set up a user? How does a Zoom admin configure that user for Zoom phone? And then three, how does that admin set up maybe a call queue or IVR? We're going to go through those three simple things today in this demo. So just know this, everything that you can do in the Zoom world is done from one portal. One administrative portal allows you to do everything from a Zoom admin perspective. So in order to go to the portal, just go to zoom.com in the top right hand corner, you're going to see my account. Click on that. So when you're a Zoom admin, your portal is going to open up to your profile and we need to go to the user section. So just navigate on the left navigation bar and go to users. In the admin section, you see user management. Obviously click on that and then go to users. So now in order to add a new user, click the highlighted blue add a user button. So you're going to need some information from that user. For example, their email address. Type that in first. So now we have to assign a license to that user. So depending on what license you've purchased are the ones that are available. So in this example, I have a bunch of different licenses that I've purchased. This is my test account. So this screen will look different depending on what you purchase. So let's assign a Zoom Workplace Enterprise Premier license. I have 10 available to this user. If this user was a frontline user that's mainly on mobile, you'd probably assign a frontline license, but we're just gonna assume this is just a regular knowledge worker for this example. So now within that Zoom Workplace license, I will have a bunch of different grant their levels of assignment of licenses. So we're probably just going to pick all these to assign to the user, but you pick whatever one works best for you. So I'm going to pick large meetings to assign to this user. By default, they have a thousand participants. If you need to lower that to 500, you can, but I'm going to leave it at large meetings. I'm going to also add a phone to this user and we're going to go over phone management in the next demo. So we're just going to check that for now. I'm going to add webinars. Sessions again is another feature that allows us to run uh, multiple sessions during an event. So we're going to sign that. Events license is another license that allows this user to run multi-day events. So we're going to sign that. Revenue accelerator is another feature. Whiteboard is another feature. Quality management, right? We're going to sign all of these things. And if you don't know what they are, just look them up. Or we're not going to go through them all here today. I'm just going to sign every license to this user. So now we just need to fill out what department they're in. We're just going to say that they're in the product department. And we're going to sign their manager's name as an email address. What's their job title? Product manager. Where are they located? San Jose, sure. What's the cost center? I don't know. Depends on who's going to pay for it, but we'll just put 100 for now. And then what groups are they assigned to? So for example, I have a couple of uh, groups that I've already put into my account. I'm going to assign them to the, the information technology group. And then we hit add and we're done. We're done setting up a user. Okay. Once you sent the invitation to that user, they will go into a pending status until they accept that invitation. So under the pending tab, you'll see pending invitations to join your Zoom account. So we have to wait for the user to accept that before we can move forward with configuring everything else, like phone. Okay, once the user has accepted the invitation, they'll get moved to the user's column, and now we can finish configuring the Zoom phone part. So now to configure phone, go to phone system management on the left navigation bar here, and then we're gonna go to users and rooms, and then we're gonna scroll down until we see that user. There they are right here. That user already has an internal extension, so they could already be receiving calls internally, but we wanna assign an external PSTN number to that user. So we have to go over here to assign. Click that, and we wanna assign a package. So now we're gonna be assigning the Zoom phone basic package. This allows extension to extension dialing, as well as audio conferencing and call queue. So just hit assign. But we also have to assign a calling plan. So we have a US-based user, we're gonna assign a US-based calling plan, unlimited calling plan from Zoom. Click that and then confirm and assign phone numbers. So now we need to assign an external phone number, a PSTN number for that user, so people can obviously call them on their phone. If you need a specialized set of numbers, so for example, a user's in a certain area code, just go to the Get Numbers tab, and it'll take you to the Get Numbers portal, and you can get numbers from there. We'll just do it real quick. So in the Get Numbers portal, for example, you can pick numbers from Alabama if that user's in Alabama. You can enter the area code for that number that you want, and then hit Search, and it'll give you some available numbers that you can pick from. Just pick one, hit Done, and now that number is available to assign to the new user you just created. So this user happens to just live in Charlotte, North Carolina. So that 980 number works for them. I'll just hit click 
and I'll assign that number to them. So now this brand new user that I created, Stephanie Kelly, by the way, uh, that's my wife. She doesn't know she's doing this, but <laughs> thanks for playing along, babe. I've added a user. I've assigned their all their licenses from the Zoom Workplace a bundle. I've assigned them a phone number and I've assigned them a calling plan, all from one administrative portal. And that is it. That's as complicated as it is to create a brand new user and assign a phone. What did that take? Like 30 seconds? I have no idea. It really wasn't timing it. So now for this next demo, I had to put on my glasses because it's hard to see that far away. So now let's go to more advanced call stuff like calling queues or IVRs or auto attendance. How do we do that inside of Zoom? Well, we're going to show you next. So to create a call queue, stay in the phone management portal and just go to call queues. Click on that. I already have a couple configured, but let's just do a brand new one just for demo sakes. So to do that, just click add. So let's just name this one uh, product marketing and put a description in it so you can understand what it is later on when you forget. And by default, it picks the next extension number in your pool. But if you want to put a custom one in there, just add that. And now we want to add members to this custom call queue. So let's click add. So we're going to add Stephanie. We're going to add Megan Trainer. We're going to add uh, me as well as my Zoom and Air account. And we'll just going to click OK. If you get really fancy, you can apply templates, but we're not. We're just going to do this from scratch. Hit save. OK, great. So now you've created your call queue. Now you need to configure your call queue. By default, this is an internal call queue, but if you need to add an external number, you can by hitting numbers here, hit add. And again, pick one of those numbers that we have in your pool. We just created this Alabama number in the last example. We can just click that one and confirm it. So now that call queue has an external number associated with it as well. We already set the members of this call queue, but you can edit that. We also want to set an admin for this call queue. So if you want to set an admin for this call queue, just hit set. By default, there is a call queue admin role right here. I'd probably choose that one. <laughs> So go to hit edit. And now we can add members to this call queue administrative group. So go hit add members, add new members, and we'll make Stephanie an admin of that call queue. Hit add, you're done. Admin set. All right, let's continue configuring. We can set a department for this call queue and you can add a cost center. We picked a hundred last time. So that way we can associate who gets to pay for this call queue. You can pick the language, by the way, it drops down to American English by default. And now we can set business hours, right? Here it's set to 24 seven, but again, you can edit that however you'd like. So now how are callers greeted when they call into that call queue? By default, you can have one that says- Please wait while we connect your call. That's the default. If you'd like to change one, you can literally choose whatever one you like. If you want to record one, if you want to add audio, you can totally do that from your assets library as well. We'll just leave it at default. You can also play music while that person's waiting in that call queue. So by default, this is what's played. If you have a music that you would like to play or a voiceover you'd like to play, just add that here from the custom asset library. So now how are calls going to be distributed in this call queue? Remember, we added four different people to this call queue. So in this example, all four people would be called at the same time. That might be okay, but you can also change that however you like. You have five different options here, sequential, rotating, group rotating, or longest idle. So we're gonna pick longest idle. So whoever the, was the last person to get a phone call will go roll to the bottom and the next person waiting in line will get that with long idle. We can now configure how long that call will ring before it goes to the next person. So let's just do 15 seconds. And there are also more options. So you wanna handle multiple incoming calls or, or skip offline devices so those aren't called. I'll just hit confirm on this one. Do you want to have that individual user in that call queue receive a call while they're on the call? You can. I'm going to leave this off. I don't want multiple calls coming into one user. So now there's music on hold. You're going to think this is very dissimilar to audio while connecting, but they're very different. So by audio while connecting is when that call is waiting to be routed, it'll play that tone. While the user's on hold, it'll play this. It's the exact same tone for audio while connecting, but obviously you can change that however you'd like. So this is the maximum amount of time a user will wait in queue. Obviously by default, it's one minute. You can change that to however long you want. We'll just add it to four. But once that four minutes is hit, we're going to have some cool stuff that we can do afterwards for overflow calls. So we're going to confirm that. So wrap up time is once you're in a member of a call queue and you receive a call before you get that next call, there's a wrap up time. So maybe you want to take some notes, for example, zero seconds is, is really not a short duration before you get your next call. So let's add five minutes to this. So maximum calls in a queue is set to 60. So that's obviously the maximum amount of callers you can have waiting in the queue. That's a lot. So let's drop that down to five before we do some overflow situations. So now once we've hit those overflow situations, for example, the six caller in this queue, we can actually go to overflow options here right now. It's by default is leave a voicemail in the current extension, but we can edit that to do other stuff. For example, we can play a message then disconnect. We can actually transfer it, route it to another user or to another group or to an auto receptionist. You can pick whatever works for you.
Obviously, we have a default greeting. We are, we are sorry. sorry. There is, there no, is one no one available, available to take your call. call. And then we can leave a voicemail to that call queue's extension. So those are pretty good for me. I'm going to hit save. So now if you want to set alerts or notifications in your call queue, you can. You don't have to. But to do that, you would have to go to the alerts and notification sections. And by clicking that, it takes you right there. And this is a Zoom phone alert. So let's just see what it does when I hit add. So now I can configure that alert uh, for this call queue. I'm not going to set one, but if you need one, go ahead and set it. So now data and storage. Where is your call queue data going to be stored? For example, all that data storage for maybe voicemails or recordings, you can store in whatever global vicinity that you set that call queue up. This one's set in the United States. So by default, it's set to the United States to store data. And then you can store this data wherever you need to for compliance regulations. So by default, we'll just leave that United States. And that's it. You're done setting up a call queue. Set up as many as you want. You can do that all from the call queue screen. So you're done. It's that simple. You've added a user. You've actually set up licenses for that user. You've configured a phone for that user. You've set up a call queue. You're a Zoom admin expert right now. So I hope that was a good example on how easy it is to set up phones and users inside of the Zoom admin portal. I'm Patrick Kelly, the Tattooed Nerd.